success um, you know we've been a number one we've been around for more than a decade so we have a very deep history of learning about aerial technologies from the flight controller um, to the aircraft to the stabilization of the footage um, so this is something that we're really proud of we've done a lot of you know testing and, and experimenting in the past decade uh, but really it was until 2012 when we had our first out-of-the-box um, drone which was the Phantom 1 also, I think the location here in Sanjian also gives us in a, in a good, good position because uh, you know, many regard this uh, area as the innovation hub or the Silicon Valley of the East or of China. So the second one being location, I think the third one also being um, you know, our business model or IP. We really want to keep the intellectual property, uh, what we built, what we learned, uh, really close to us so that we can take advantage of that and build outwards, uh, build different technologies. Uh, and the last one, I think, is also um, the way we, our mentality, or the way we think about innovation. Uh, so we're never happy with what we build now. So if we built the Phantom 4, we're always thinking about what's going to be next. How can we make it better? How can we make it easier? Uh, how can we make it more intelligent? So we're never self-satisfying. We want to actually just keep pushing ourselves to the next level and try to look at things from different angles and different perspectives. So if you look at, I think, the consumer space or recreational space, this is still a relatively new technology. People are still learning how to fly, what this uh, drone is, uh, and what it can do for them. Uh, so on the consumer side, I think there's still a lot of learning about um, relevance or, or what this means to that particular consumer. But what we also saw is that the enterprise side, or businesses, are star starting to look at how could this help me do my job. Um, so on the enterprise side, you're seeing a different trend where people are learning about this technology, trying to apply this into their specific field. Um, and there are areas like inspection, agriculture, uh, cinematography, um, emergency response, like search and rescue or firefighting. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. So once they learn how to use this for their industry, um, they really want to get deeper into this. Uh, and really find out how can I apply this to my day-to-day -day job or, or into my operations. So this is really an interesting trend uh, that we're seeing across the world. So if you look at consumer drones, um, we launched the Spark a couple months ago. So this is the smallest drone that we've, we've made for consumers. And what's unique about this drone is that uh, it's the first consumer drone that you could control using just gesture. So we never imagined that people could control a, a aircraft just by waving their hands. But now we've made it possible because um, our goal is to actually make it easy to use. But I think um, drones are evolving in a way where we're kind of collaborating with different industry partners or people in different industries uh, to really come up with platforms that suit their needs. So I think you'll see more tailored platforms uh, for specific industries. But overall, I think what you'll see in terms of the trend, the big trend is probably gonna be you know, a lot smaller. The form factor is gonna be much better. We're trying to also to use algorithms and uh, different components to maximize the flight time. If you look at one of our consumer drones, uh, the maximum flight time is up to 30 minutes, which is you know, a lot better than what, what's out there uh, in terms of the consumer um, market. So we're looking at a couple of things, form factor, increasing battery life, uh, making drones smarter and more autonomous. So people could, you know, anybody could learn and fly a drone and, and do what they need to do with it.